Chapter 21, Findings. Newsflash, invisible people make excellent spies and thieves. Finding exactly what I want at the legal department is ridiculously easy. Access through the security doors, a snap. I wait for a slow-moving person of considerable size and slide through the doorway right behind his behind. Finding the right information, a cinch. I've got a name to work with. Amber Carson is the woman who stonewalled Alicia on the phone about two and a half hours ago. I find her office on the fourth floor, which is the only hard part, and then I wait patiently in an empty cubicle until she goes to lunch at 1225. Miss Carson apparently trusts all her co-workers because she doesn't log off of her computer, which is good because it saves me the trouble of finding Alicia and telling her that this is going to take a lot longer, which it would have because I'd have to wait until Amber Carson got back from lunch, then I'd have had to look over her shoulder to learn her password and then wait for her to leave her office again so I could use her computer. I don't know if I could ever be a good lawyer. Lawyers are organized. The folks at Sears keep their files in such good order that I bet I could start from nothing and find whatever I needed in 15 minutes or less. But I don't even have to do an actual search. That's because I've got inside information. I happen to know that Amber Carson accessed the very file I'm looking for earlier today when Alicia called her. So all I have to do is use the recent documents utility on her computer. Point, click, and there it is, which is kind of a shame. I went to a lot of trouble to memorize the model number of the blanket, all 10 characters, and now I don't even need to use it. The database notes show the entire history of my doomed electric blanket. Turns out 9,308 blankets were sold before it was discovered that some percentage of the controller units had been manufactured with faulty resistors. As of today, 379 consumers have complained, and of those, 163 have accepted a new blanket. When the problem was first noticed, the legal counsel had advised that there should be no product recall, but rather customer service should go with a replace-as-requested plan. Only one customer had complained that he believed the blanket made his heart pacemaker malfunction, but there was no injury and no lawsuit. Still to be on the safe side, the legal staff set the policy that any complaining customer with a pacemaker should be advised to discontinue use of the blanket and return it immediately for refund, credit, or exchange. I'm glad I know enough about computers because all I really want from the file is the list of 379 people who complained about the blanket. And with a couple simple sort functions, I've got their names and addresses and phone numbers isolated in a list. Printing out the list would make a big stack of paper unless you know how to format, which I do. And it turns out that Amber Carson is an important enough person in the Sears legal department to have her own laser printer on a work table by a window that looks out over the rolling lawn. So I put the whole list into seven point type, single space it, format it into six columns and print it out. I end up with just three pages, very small type but readable. I fold the stack of pages inward from top to bottom three times and then fold the result in half lengthwise twice more. What I end up with is a wad of paper about an inch wide and two inches long, the perfect size to stick up into my left armpit, gross and uncomfortable but effective. As long as I keep my left arm clamped against my side, the paper is completely hidden. By 1247, I'm on my way to hunt for Alicia. I could just go to the main entrance and wait for her because that was our plan, but what's the fun of that? I'd rather track her down. I glide through three different doors, then down one stairwell, along one corridor, through one last door, and then I'm outside. It's a lot more spring-like in Hoffman Estates than it was in Hyde Park. People are all over the place, eating lunch, resting, talking with friends. They look like creatures who have crawled out of burrows to soak up some sunlight. Except for the smokers. There's a little group of them outside almost every doorway, standing around looking sort of defensive. They're not outside for the fresh air. I hold my breath when I go past so I don't have to smell the stuff. The map at the reception area said the personnel offices are in a building that's close to the main entrance. Again, I wait for someone to help me through the security doors. Once inside, I'm lost, on the ground floor, and it's an area about the size of three football fields. There are partitions and corridors, nice offices around the perimeter, paintings and posters everywhere, bright and cheery, but it's still like a maze. This is an employees-only area, so there are no signs, no helpful maps or diagrams, except for the occasional emergency evacuation poster. So I just wander. My shoulder is aching and my arm is starting to go to sleep from the pressure of the clump of paper in my armpit. I'm almost ready to give up and head for our rendezvous spot. Then I hear Alicia's laugh, complete with that little snort at the end. <clears throat> I follow the sound to a glass-walled conference room where she's sitting with a bottle of Snapple and a thick blue folder on the table in front of her. 
Alicia smiling and nodding, moving her head to follow the voices of the people at the table. She looks like she could have just graduated from college with honors and three proposals of marriage. Apparently, the guy who picked her up from the reception is the big joker because as I approach, he says something I can't quite hear, and Alicia and the two other people in the room start cracking up. Also, at the table is a man who looks as old as my dad, but with a wrinkly face, with a gray mustache and not much hair up top. He's wearing incredibly thick glasses. The fourth person is a woman who's maybe 30, maybe younger. She's got short blonde hair and big earrings, and she's wearing a soft gray pants and jacket outfit with a pink shirt. A nice enough face, a good smile, but squinting. Then I see this lady's like Alicia. She's got a white cane on the floor by her chair.